This will be exercise one, Metaphors of Geologic Time, and this will be your first lab in your lab manual. Now the purpose of this exercise is to acquaint you, the student, with geologic time or deep time. It'll actually help you to gain a better understanding and appreciation for deep time. We're going to do this by creating a metaphor of geologic time. Metaphors of geologic time give us can give us a better understanding in a more concrete way the difference between a hundred years and one billion years. There's a very common metaphor of geologic time that's used. It's setting the geologic time or the Earth's time to one calendar year. So we're taking 4.6 billion years and we're spitting it into one calendar year. With this metaphor, at 12 a.m. January 1st, this would be equated with the origin of the solar system and the planet Earth 4.6 billion years ago. On this scale, the oldest rocks known on the Earth's date from February 17th, and the oldest unambiguous fossils would appear on March 29th. The invasion of land by plants and animals occurred in late November. Dinosaurs would have arose on December 14th and become extinct on December 26th. Hominids and the family of primates that include Homo sapiens appeared at around 4.30 p.m. on December 31st. Rome would have ruled the Western world for five seconds from 11.59 and 45 seconds to 11.59 and 50 seconds. And Columbus discovered North America three seconds before midnight on the 31st of December. So this is an example of direct time for time conversion. You're going to do the same type of direct time for time conversion with your own life. So you're going to look at your age and you're going to set Earth's, excuse me, you're going to go ahead and set Earth's time into your age, just like this metaphor was done for a calendar year. All right, so in part one, you may want to follow along in your lab manual, so you might want to open that up, take a look. But in part one, what we're going to do to start this calculation, we need to take your age and convert it into seconds. I'm going to be doing the calculation for a 30-year-old. If you're 30 years old, you're going to be 29 years of age for this exercise. All right, so getting it into seconds. The first thing we need to do is take the person's age. So I'm doing this for a 30 year old. You would put your age into this calculation here and we will multiply it by the number of days in the year which is 365 days. Next, we'll take those days which came out to 10,950 days and we will multiply them by 24 because we know that there are 24 hours in one day. This will get us get our number down to 262,800 hours. Next, let's convert those hours into minutes. We'll take the hours that we just got and we're going to multiply that by 60 minutes because we know there are 60 minutes in one hour. So this will give us 15,768,000 minutes. Next, we're going to take that 15,768 minutes and convert it into seconds. We know that there are 60 seconds in one minute, so we'll multiply by 60. This will give us 9 million 400, excuse me, 946 million 80,000 seconds. Now we have this person in seconds, so we know the 30 year old person would be. 946,080,000 seconds old. Right? Your number is going to be different because you're going to be calculating for your age. And if you're 30, reminder, you're going to be 29 for this exercise. Okay, so now what we need to do is determine how much time one second of this person's life would be equal to in Earth's history. So we know that the Earth is 4.6 billion years old. So we're going to take that number and we're going to divide it by this person in second. This is going to give us a unit ratio. It's going to tell us how many years per one second of this person's life 
okay, would be equal to. So I'm going to take 4 billion 600 million years and I'm going to divide it by the number of seconds I calculated earlier. This gives me 4.86216814. I'm going to round that off to the hundredths place, which is two decimal places. So I'm going to get 4.86 years per second. Right? So once you've done part one, you're going to only need to do this calculation one time. In part two, you'll need to repeat it for all nine boundaries. But part one only needs to be done once. All right, so part two, we're going to go keep moving forward. We need to get everything converted into our life. All right, just like the calendar year for Earth, we're going to do the same for our life to Earth so that we can put it on the geologic time scale. So, first thing we're going to do is calculate how old this person would be at each of the major boundaries and the boundaries of the periods of the Cenozoic. This means that you're going to be repeating part two nine times for each boundary, once for each boundary. I'm going to do the calculation for just the Precambrian to Cambrian boundary. At the Precambrian to Cambrian boundary, you can either look at the notes in your lab manual. This gives you the date. That boundary occurred 542 million years ago. You can also look at your geologic time scale to find this number. I'm going to divide this by the calculation from part one, which was the 4.86. This is for the 30-year-old. Remember, you're going to have a different number in here in your calculation. So this gives me 111,522,633.7 seconds. All right, well, this number is going to be in my seconds, so I want to convert this, all right? Because if you remember, my 4.86 was, we were looking at years per second. I have years on this front number. I have years on this number. When I cancel these out, I'm left with this per seconds. All right, so seconds. I could put this on the calendar. This is how many seconds into your, this person's life this boundary would be. However, it's a little difficult working with seconds, so we're going to get this into a manageable number to start with. All right. So that means I need to get it out of seconds and into something more manageable. Well, let's start by getting it from seconds to minutes then. Well, we know from the previous calculation that there's going to be 60 seconds in one minute. So now we're just going to work the calculations the opposite direction. We're going to do dividing instead of multiplying. So I'm going to take that number in seconds that I got, divide it by 60 seconds, and it's going to give me my minutes. So in this case, when I'm looking at it, I left out my commas here, but I have 1,858,710.562 minutes. Well, minutes are still a little bit difficult to work with, particularly when they're this large. So now we're going to turn this to hours. So I'm going to take those minutes and then divide it by 60 minutes because we know that there are are going to be 60 minutes in one hour. This is going to take us to our hours. So I get, I'm going to get here 30,978.50937. I'm going to take those hours now and convert them to days. We know that there are 24 hours in a day, so we'll divide by that 24 and we get 1,290.771224 days. That's still kind of a large number. So let's take it now up to years. Okay. So I'm going to take that same number and I'm going to now divide it by 365 years, or excuse me, days, because we know that there are 365 days in one year. And this gives me 3.53635951818 years. 
So if I look at this in years, this rounds to 3.54 years. Well, now I need to see what do I do with this number. What this is, is it's telling me that that boundary occurred 3.54 years in this person's past. So to figure out exactly how old they were at that time, I need to take their age and subtract 3.54 from it. That gives me 26.46 years. So at the boundary between the Precambrian and the Cambrian, I know that this person was 26.46 years in age. You'll also want to keep track of this because we'll need it later, this number. All right, so next, let's take the decimal years and convert those to days. So I'm going to take that number and I'm just going to take the decimal, just the 0.46 off the back and turn that into days. We know that there are 365 days in a year, so that's 167.9 days. So now I want to take the decimal and the days and convert that to hours. I'm going to just ignore the 167 just for the moment and just take the 0.9. So I take the 0.9 off the back of that number and I know that there are 24 hours in a day. So I take that 0.9 times 24 and I know that this comes out to 21.6 hours. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to take that 0.6 hours and convert that to minutes. So I take that 0.6 hours times 60 minutes and this equals 300, or excuse me, 36 minutes. Pardon me. All right, so when I look at this person and I bring all these numbers back, right, this person was 26 years, 167 days, 21 hours and 36 minutes old at this boundary. Right? So at the Precambrian Cambrian boundary, a 30 year old would be approximately 26 years, 160 days, 21 hours and 36 minutes old. Go ahead and transfer this to your geologic time scale at the back of this lab. All right, so in part two, part two you're going to repeat for all the boundaries for your age. So you will repeat these steps for your age. Once you have an age for all nine boundaries, you will place these ages on figure 1.2. This is the geologic time scale at the back. You will also be submitting your work for parts one through three, showing all your work for the Precambrian Cambrian boundary. Right? I'm only going to require you to submit your full work for the Precambrian-Cambrian boundary. You can look back at your instructions for formats and ways to submit this. For the other boundaries, I'll only be looking for the last value, the final value, the person's age for part two. Okay. All right, now part three. This one you're going to only have to do once. It's only asking you to calculate the percentage of your life that would be spent in the Precambrian time. We know that the Precambrian takes up 88% of Earth's geologic time and that the Earth is 4.6 billion years old. So knowing that, let's first look at this number. What we're going to do is figure out how many, how much of um, we're looking at in earth years, okay, that 88% would be out of the 4.6 billion years that we know the earth's age to be. So what we're going to do is set up a proportion problem. We're looking at the 88% and we put it over 100. Now, in earth's history, okay, we know that um, well, we're trying to find the Earth's years, so we know that the Earth is 4.6 billion years, so we put it on the other side. Now what we're going to do to solve for those Earth years is just do a cross multiplication. What that means is we're going to take the Earth years up here times the 100. Then we're going to cross multiply the other side, 
88 times 4.6 billion years. So that gives me this problem. 100 times Earth years equals 88 on the other side, 88 times the 4.6 billion. So let's work that one. So over here we have a number okay to the earth years we have nothing to multiply but on the other side we do we'll take that 88 times the 4.6 billion and we get 404 billion 800 million now we need to just get the earth's years by itself to do this we need to divide out this 100 so whatever we do to one side of an equal sign we always do to the other side so we're going to divide by that 100 so we're going to take that 100, bring it over to the other side, and divide it. When we divide it out on the side with the earth years, it cancels out. Anything divided by itself creates a 1, so it cancels down to a 1. All right, so we divide that in. This gives us 4 billion, 48 million years. This means that the Precambrian takes up this many years in the Earth's history, in geologic time. It's a lot. A lot of the Precambrian, is, or excuse me, the Precambrian takes up quite a bit of Earth's history or Earth's time. All right, so now what we want to do is figure out how much of your life would have been spent in the Precambrian. So we're going to look at the years in your life that are spent in the Precambrian. So I look here. I'm going to take the Precambrian, that number we got from previously, all right, we're going to set up another proportion problem, divided by, if we look at this one, divided by the amount of the Earth's history, or Earth, excuse me, Earth's time hit down here. Now we want to look at the years in your life to, now remember I told you that number would become important later on, that 26.46 from the Precambrian. All right, from part two, that's where we get this number from, this 26.46. Your number will be whatever number you got in part two. Let's do the cross multiplication. So this gives me the 4.6 billion years on one side and the years in your life and the 26.46 with the 4,048,000 that we calculated from part three, step one. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of multiplying this number. So once I multiply that number, I've got 107 billion, 110, excuse me. Okay, I'm getting myself tongue tied here. All right, so we're going to take that number, we're going to multi divide it by, I'm going to try, and, I'm going to stop trying to say that because I'm just going to keep getting myself messed up. All right, so we're going to take that 4.6 billion, let's divide it in, and now we've got 23.2848 years in your life, All right? For a 30-year-old, this would be equal to approximately 23.3 years of their life. Oops. So <clears throat> now we know how many years of your life would equate to the Cambrian Precambrian boundary. Okay, so you're going to do this calculation for your age, so that means that you need to find the number that you found for your age back in part two. All right, um, <clears throat> and that pretty much concludes the instructions for this one. All right, remember, return to the instructions page for instructions on how to submit your complete work for parts one, two, and three for the Precambrian. For the other sections, for the other nine or other eight boundaries that you're going to complete, you're only going to be submitting the final values for those. All right.